In this video, we'll take what we uh, used to find the reactions in a simply loaded beam, and we'll apply that to a beam with a distributed load on it. And it'll be largely the same. There's just an extra step in figuring out what the point load equivalent is to a distributed load. So if you remember back to when we were talking about principles of statics, we talked about two types of loading uh, on a beam or a slab. A point load, which is a discrete load that we can represent as an arrow, and a distributed load, which in the case of a beam is something that's spread out along a portion of the length of the beam. And the way we write that is uh, pounds per linear foot on a beam. It would be pounds per square foot if we were talking about a slab. We're going to keep things one dimensional at this point, just talking about beams and stretching that load out over the, the length or portion of the length uh, of a beam. So in this case, we have our 500 pound load on the pier above the hungry shark. We have uh, barrels of water, shark chum, whatever, that are spread out across the pier. And in that case, we, were, we call this a distributed load, right? something that takes up actual space. Now, for our purposes, what we want to do is we want to find a point load equivalent to that distributed load. When we actually start looking at the internal stresses within the beam, it's going to make a difference whether the loads we're talking about are point loads or distributed loads. But for finding the reactions, all we're worried about really are the magnitude and where basically that magnitude or that load is acting on the beam. Remember that we draw distributed loads like this, basically an infinite number of arrows across the, the span on which the, the load is, uh, is acting. And you can see very easily that we're going to have a magnitude here that's equal to the uh, pounds per linear foot times the linear feet that it spreads across. So 144 pounds per linear foot, we multiply that by 32. And what we'll get is a figure in feet, note that the, or in pounds, sorry, note that the linear feet cancel out, 140 pounds per linear foot times 32 feet. The magnitude is going to be 4480, and the units are going to be pounds because the feet cancel one another out. So that 140 pounds per linear foot, for our purposes, finding the reactions, is basically going to be the same as a single point load that's equal to the magnitude of the whole magnitude of the distributed load, and it's going to act through the center of that distributed load. If it's an evenly distributed load, 140 pounds per linear foot, it'll happen at the center point. That's probably as complex as we need to get for right now. So in the, the pure example, where we have a 500 pound load and that 140 pound per linear foot distributed load, the reactions are going to be exactly the same as if we had the 500 pound load and the 4480 load that's acting again at the, at the mid span, the middle of the load itself. Not necessarily the middle of the beam. That distributed load could rest on one side of the beam or halfway across or a third of the way across. The position that we assume the load is acting at is the center of the distributed load, right? Not, not necessarily the beam itself. So we have found uh, a point load equivalent for that distributed load, 4480 pounds. If we go back to our peer example, remember we also had a point load of 500 pounds acting 10 feet away uh, from the edge. So now we have two point loads and we're going to again try to find the reaction left and the reaction right, the two reactions that would stabilize the beam under this loading condition. So just like before, we're going to solve for this equation the sum of the moments around one reaction or another. In this case, we'll say uh, the, the right reaction. We want all of those moments to equal zero. Why do we pick one reaction or another? To try to uh, find a place where we can sort of take out one of the loads. In this case, that reaction is passing through the support, so it has no lever arm, so it cannot impart a moment uh, to, to that point. Um, and we're also uh, trying to find a place where we know we can reliably calculate the moments that each of the loads will have uh, around them in a beam. That could be anywhere, but it's going to be simplest to pick one of the supports, reaction left or reaction right. So we're going to total up all of the moments that are acting around that point. We want them all to equal zero. How many forces do we have that can impart 
a moment around that point? Well, we have three. We have the 500 pounds, the 4480 pounds, and then note that we also have the reaction at the left support. Notice too that the reaction at the left support we're assuming is pushing up, uh, therefore it is going to impart a moment to the beam that is clockwise. Both of the loads on the pier itself, the 4480 and the 500 pounds, those are uh, pushing down and they're trying to rotate the beam counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So we have a chance of making this work. Two forces or two loads that are going to impart a clockwise uh, rotation to the beam, one load to resist it that's going to impart a counterclockwise moment to the beam. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what moments those two have around that reaction. And then we're gonna use that, divide out the moment arm that the reaction left has and figure out what the magnitude of this reaction has to be to counteract those two. So we'll take all of the loads on the beam, we'll figure out what the moment arm is around the point that we're interested in. And remember in this case, we've selected the right reaction right here. These are pin connections we're going to assume. So right reaction can't have any moment around it, which lets us do the, the sum of the moment equation equal to zero. So we'll take each of the three forces, each of the three loads, the reaction left, its moment arm is the full length of the beam, so 32 feet. So RL times 32, that is the leverage or the torque that that reaction will have around uh, the, the, the right support. The 500 pound load has a lever arm of six feet plus 16 feet, that's 22 feet around reaction right. And the 4480 pounds has a moment arm of 16 feet around that support. Now, notice that we've had to be very careful about the sense of each uh, equation. We started with RL times 32, and we've just we've said that this is positive. Could be either one, but now we have to think through whether the other forces on the beam are imparting a positive or a negative moment, whether they're going in the same direction as RL or not. RL, remember, is going to impart a moment around that point that's going to be clockwise. And notice that 500, the 500-pound 500 and the 4480 pounds load are both going to impart moments that are counterclockwise, anticlockwise. So they're going to have the opposite sign. And note that there's a negative in front of each of these. RL times 32 is positive. These two loads are negative. So they're going in the opposite direction. And now we can very easily move the negatives over to the right side of the equation. RL times 32 will equal, be equal and opposite to the sum of those two moments. We can just do some simple multiplication and find that the 500 pound load times 22 feet will impart a moment of 11,000 foot pounds, feet times pounds, and the 4480 pound load will impart a moment of 71,680. 4480 times 16 pounds times feet. 71,680 feet times pounds. So we can add these two together. They're both in foot pounds, so we can just use simple addition. And what we find is that RL over 32 will have to equal 82,680 foot pounds. Notice that that's the total leverage, the total torque that those two loads are imparting around the right reaction. And then we will divide out RL's moment arm, 32 feet, right? Move that over to the right side of the equation to figure out what the magnitude of RL will be. And notice again, feet will cancel out and we'll get RL in pounds, which is what we want. So 82,680 divided by 32, it's going to be 25 or 2583.75 pounds. The feet go away. And that figure is the reaction which, when multiplied by its moment arm, will exactly counterbalance the two moments that these loads put uh, around that support. Right? So we've figured out one of the two reactions. Now we can solve for RR either using some of the moments around the left reaction. We would take RL, we would subtract, or sorry, we would take 500 and the 4480, but now notice that the moment arms would go the other way. It'd be 500 times 10, 4480 times six, 
divide all that by 32. Or we could solve for the sum of y, the sum of the forces in the vertical direction. Note that all of the arrows are either going up or down. Sum of y is going to be a little bit simpler. We have only one that we don't know, uh, so it's going to be relatively easy to solve. And what that equation is going to look like is this. We have RL, 2583.75, pushing up, so that's positive. We have the 500-pound load pushing down, so that's negative. 4480 pounds pushing down, so that's negative. And then RR is going to be positive, right, because it's pushing up. I think it's pushing up. Uh, and all of that, of course, has to equal zero. We don't want the pier to rotate in space, but we certainly don't want the pier to move, certainly don't want the pier to move down in space. All of those are in pounds. Sorry, two pounds there. There should just be one. So the total of this is 2396.25. Notice that it's a negative. If we move that over to the other side, we get that RR equals 2396.25 pounds there. So we now have the pier in rotational equilibrium uh, around uh, right reaction. We have the pier in uh, translational equilibrium in the y direction. We don't have any forces working in the x direction, so we know it's in equilibrium there already. We could go back and check. We could run the equations to see if the sum of the moments around uh, left uh, are uh, all balance out. Um, we'll assume that they will, right? This is uh, a, a pier that is now in equilibrium. We've solved for the reactions with the 500 pound load and the distributed load of 140 pounds per linear foot. By taking that distributed load, turning it into an equivalent point load, and then proceeding with the same process that we proceeded for simple point loads uh, on beams. There will be a little bonus video where I'll do a couple of more examples. So if you are at all uh, still confused or want a little bit more uh, uh, experience in running through these beam equilibrium calculations, we'll do a few examples. We'll do a couple that uh, are a little bit exotic to show what happens, for instance, when we get into uh, cantilevers and double cantilevers, what happens to the reactions and some surprising results uh, when the geometry gets a little bit weird. In the next full lecture, though, we'll start to look inside of beams and we'll look at the mechanics for how they transfer loads over uh, a span. We've talked about this a little bit, that beams go into this very particular kind of stress called bending that has both elements of tension and compression. We will use what we've learned about beam equilibrium to start to do thought experiments where we'll, using math, but also just using intuition, start to question what the levels of shear and bending have to be uh, within a beam to keep it in equilibrium, not just externally, uh, but also internally.